Okay, in this video, I want to talk about the this reference. Uh, let's first start with slide 29. As you can see, we see a little class called student. And in it, we have a couple of methods, set grade point average and get grade point average. Now notice these are public methods, meaning anybody outside the class can get to them. They're void. They, this one's void. It returns nothing. And it passes GPA, which is a number. GPA comes in and it sets the variable grade point average, which you can see up here, private number grade point average. In this class, there is an attribute called grade point average. Because it's declared under the class, all these methods have access to it. It's not contained within any one method. So right here we have grade point average. I can use it here. I can use it here. If I had other methods, I can use it. So by declaring it up here, right under saying the class name, that says any method or behavior within the class can get to this attribute grade point method, grade point average. Now also notice that this is private. All attributes should be private. You don't want everybody just going willy-nilly into your um, attributes and being able to change them. You want to be able to change them through methods within the class. So right here we have number, grade point average, GPA equals grade point average, and then it just returns. This one's get grade point average. So what do we do? We return the grade point average, and then we end the class. So here's a class called student. It just sets a grade point average or gets the grade point average. That's all it does. So now we look at the next slide. And here we have a class uh, called student demo, and that's what contains the main. Remember, main is where everything starts. And I have three different um, declarations. One is for student one software, which means I'm going to create a object called one sophomore, and it's of the class student. I'm going to create an object called one junior. It's of the class student. I'm going to create a object called one senior, and it's of the class student. And as we saw over here, student basically just keeps a grade point average. That's all it does. We could have added other things. We could have been much more complex, but we just want to keep it simple for this time. So when I create the object, one sophomore, one junior, one senior, the computer actually takes up space. These things exist and take up space. Here's one sophomore. Here's one junior. Here's one senior. Somewhere in the computer memory, it stored it. So now I say one sophomore, which is the object, dot set grade point average, which says get me this method. Where is this method? It's in one sophomore. And I'm going to set it to 2.6. So I set one sophomore to 2.6. I now have another one, set grade point average for one junior, the object one junior, and I'm going to set it to 3.8. Here it's set to 3.8. And then I finally have one senior object, and I'm going to set it to set grade point average 3.4. And it's set to 3.4. Now one of the things I did mention, this is the class. These are the objects. By using object dot method, I can get to them because they're public. Object dot method name. Object dot method name. And here, if you look at the method, it says, hey, you got to have a parameter in there, and it has to be a number. So here's my numbers, 2.6, 3.8, 3.4. Then I return. Now, if you look at this, I've got 2.6 for one sophomore, one junior is 3.8, and one senior is 3.4. How does the computer know where to go? And that's when we get into the this uh, reference. Basically, behind the scenes, what you don't see is when one sophomore dot set grade point average 2.6, the computer knows where it stored it. And so it says, okay, it set the grade point average at this address and put it at 2.6. You don't see that. It's never shown to you. Even when you run the compilers and run the uh, debuggers, you're not going to see this. It just knows where it is behind the scenes. One junior dot set grade point average 3.8. It says, oh, I know where I put one junior. Here's the one junior address. Put 3.8 there. And again, one senior dot set grade point average. Where is that object? Oh, I know where I put one senior. So this is where I'm going to store the 3.4. 
So it knows where it stored it. It knows the reference to the address. And if we could, you know, if you wanted to show it, which we don't, they just did a student address. It just kind of said, okay, in general, it knows where it put each object. It knows where it put the one sophomore address or one sophomore object. It knows where it put the one junior at, uh, object and it knows where it put the one senior object. It knows where it put these objects and it kept track of that address. And so when I say one sophomore dot, oh yeah, I know where that's at. I'm going to put the 2.6 there. One junior dot, oh, I know where that's at. It's at the one junior address. I'm going to put that value there. Now, this reference is a reference that's automatically created. It is related to this address um, and refers to a particular object. It means this object. Whatever object I'm in, it's this object. So, um, for example, I could have had grade point average that so this grade point average refers to the same memory location. And what I want to show is this right here. I could have written it this way this dot grade point average. This GPA, first off, let's say GPA. GPA is um, defined locally, meaning that if I have GPA here, which I do right here, that's how I define it. Grade point average, I would look here, there is no grade point average. I'd go up here, up oh, here's grade point average, I'm good. If it's not here, then I have an error. But it'll start locally, and then if it doesn't find it, it'll go up one level, and here's a like I said, this is a class variable, um, so it's going to use it uh, if it's not down here. I don't need the this in this case, but I can write it. So GPA, this grade point average, it means this one, whatever one I'm in, if I'm using it for the um, one sophomore, it says, okay, this address for the one sophomore, put the grade point average there. This address for the one sophomore, put the grade point average there. Uh, I don't need it because right here he'll do it automatically, but it doesn't hurt if I have it here. Where this comes in um, to use is I could say public void, again, say grade point average. And what if I called it num grade point average? I gave it the same name as what's in uh, the class variable, the attribute. So if I look back here, yep, it's grade point average, but instead of saying GPA, this time I'm saying grade point average. It's the same variable name. I have to put the this in then, because this grade point average right here, the one on the left-hand side, refers to this one, the one I passed in. This one, by putting the this here, is referring to the one that's the attribute for the class. If I did not have this this here, what it's going to do is take this grade point average, which was passed in, and put it right back into itself. You need the this to clarify that, nope, this is the one that um, attribute for the class. So if you're using the same variable name that you're passing in as the attribute, you do have to have a this there. That's why, in general, when I code, I usually don't keep these two things the same. I don't have grade point average the same as, uh, I don't have the variable passed in the same as the one that I store as the attribute. It makes it somewhat more confusing, but this is correct. This will work, and this is legal. Uh, so hopefully this kind of gives you a little more understanding of the this reference. Basically what it is is to say, okay, whatever object I'm in, this is where I want to store the grade point average. So. If I pass it in as grade point average, I want to store it this, where it is for this object. It's a um, address for this object. Um, again, if this is not used in this, this reference is not used, the local variable passed would be assigned to itself, and that's not what you want. You want to store it for the object attribute. So hopefully this was uh, some help to you. Uh, again, we'll probably go over this on Wednesday night. Uh, hope you're having all a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.